Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a very simple organic lightening body cream. This cream is specifically made for a client because she's been suffering suffering from white spots and you know her skin is not really even, which is kind of like a problem with um you know skin lightening. Some skin lightening um, products, like I always say, some work faster. Hence, you will experience a little bit of discoloration. But um, today I'm going to show you how you can make this lightening product as well as it's not going to be very, very harsh on the skin, but it's also going to make sure that the skin is repairing and evening out as she's using this product. She's going to be using this product alongside our Monato soap. You guys, I love this soap. This is one of my best sellers at the moment. This is 250 gram and it's going for 3000 Naira. Um, and yeah, she just... She, really really good soap so she's going to be using this alongside my the cream i'm going to make for her so i'm kind of sad because just before now as i was setting up my alpha abutin 3 serum broke i'm going to leave the picture so i had to like scoop what i had left and it's so so painful but yeah that's what you get for making products so if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do so and turn on the notification bell so you'll be notified whenever i upload videos like this um so today i'm going to show you how i went through the process of coming up with this um, formulation and all the science behind it so if you really really want to know about percentages and all of that keep watching this video so these are all my ingredients my workstation ignore any mess you see i'm just trying to be as careful as i can so i don't break anything again Okay, so my recipe today, I'm going to be doing the 50 to 30, um, 20% ratio. I'm going to be making 150 gram product. Now, before you make any product, you want to make sure that you know the, you know, percentage, the ratio you want. For this product, it's going to be more like a cream. It's not going to be a lotion. It's not going to be very, very um, light. It's going to be a cream. So hence, why I'm having 50% base cream and 30% serums and 20% powders. Um, some of these powders are just to, you know, complement the serums and the serums are to activate the powders as well. My cream base, I have a video on cream base. You can watch that. It's a very basic cream base. So this is going to be like a repairing and brightening cream. Like I said, it is purely natural with a little bit of synthetic powders and synthetic serums not too much serums i'm going to be focusing on repairing the skin for this formulation so i have my cream base i have abutin powder i have collagen glutathione um i have abutin serum collagen serum glutathione serum these are going to brighten and repair the skin at the same time i have aha mimi white which is going to be an exfoliant as well and i have the beauty series oil which is going to bring some glowing moisture to her skin propylene glycol to make sure the product absorbs into her skin polysorbate is also going to be an emollient which is going to use to you know bring moisture to her skin which is also going to help with the repairing of the skin i have rosy essential oil of course, you know your essential oil should not be more than 10%, uh, 1%, sorry, probably 10 drops of um, your essential oil in your formulation. You don't need anything more than that. And then I have niacinamide, giga white, sepi white, and beer berry. These are natural and synthetic powders that are just going to, you know, complement her skin. And I also have the percentage um, them next to them because I want... You know some of these products will be much more pronounced in the formulation because abitin and collagen is going to do more of repairing so they are going to be 10 percent each and then i'm going to have five percent of glutathione serum which is going to help with the brightening the ah is also going to help with the brightening and exfoliating and the rest of the powders are definitely lightening powders as well as repairing powders such as niacinamide and beer berry and gigawatt and sepi whites are mostly skin brightening powders okay giga white is the you know chief or is the they call it the accepted why they're the gold standard whitening powders for skin lightening products okay so that's the percentage of course these powders have percentage rates um, I don't know if I'm going to post the video before this one or after this one, but I have a video or I will have a video talking about percentage rates of some of these powders, okay? And then for the grams beside it, all I did was 50% of my total products, 50% of 150 grams is 75 grams, and that's how you do for the rest of the production, okay?
You see this book, if I lose it then, I've lost a lot of my time and energy. This is going to, I'm going to use this as an anti-reaction alongside with my base cream. My base cream is 50%, so I'm just going to add 5% of this. So I'm going to have 45% of my base cream and I'm going to have 5% of this product, okay? So I've gone ahead to, you know, double boil my cream base. I have a video on how to make your cream base, so you can watch that video to see how you can make your cream base. So this is when it's completely cooled i'm going to leave it at room temperature and then move on to do other things well, in order for me to be able to do this as fast as i can because i don't want to make this video too lengthy i'm going to go ahead to um dissolve my powders and all of that okay so my powders today are giga white sepi white beer berry and niacinamide powders and some of these powders are soluble in oil and some of these powders are soluble in water so i'm going to dissolve these powders and then i'm going to tell you guys what they are soluble in as i go it is very very important that you understand how to dissolve your powders so i'm just going to go ahead to dissolve these powders and i'll show you guys the process so we're going to go ahead to measure out our powders and um dissolve them just before we get started because some of them need time to dissolve properly so okay my first powder here is niacinamide with five percent which is 7.5 grams of my formulation so i'm going to measure out 7.5 grams of niacinamide niacinamide is also called vitamin b3 there are different forms of vitamin b3 uh, niacinamide is one of them so 7.5 grams take this i want to make sure that our water is a bit lukewarm we don't want to use very very hot water to dissolve our powders so i'm just going to leave it at um probably uh 40 degrees celsius um, that's much more acceptable because this is a kind of like a crystallized powder and if it's too hot it can um real crystallize if exposed to too much heat so I'm going to measure 7.5 the next part on my list is the next part on my list is Giga white powder, which is at four percent. So Giga white powder at four percent. There is an entire science behind formulation. So I know a lot of people have questions. You can send me messages, or we will start doing trainings very soon. Or we are already doing trainings actually. So this is 12. So we are doing 4%, which is 6 grams. Our next powder is sepi white powder, which is also at four percent which is six grams and the last part on our list today is the beer berry powder which we will be using at two percent which is three grams
we are going to find out, you know, their solubility, water soluble, you go into water, and then the powders that are oil soluble. I'm going to be using glycerin. So for my recipe, I'm going to reduce my because I forgot I was going to dissolve some of these powders, so I didn't make room for them. I'm going to reduce my cream base by 2%. So I'm going to be having 5% um, Kojic Clear. I'm going to be having 38% um, of, um, no, sorry. So it's going to be 5% of cream base. So I'm going to take out, let's say, 3%. So I'll have 42% of um, base cream. I'm going to have forty percent of base cream and five percent Kojic Clear Tube, and then the remaining three percent is going to be my water because everything has to amount to hundred percent. So I'm going to do the math and adjust that. Taking the temperature of my hydrosol, and as you can see, it is almost at forty degrees Celsius. It is approaching forty-five degrees, so I'm going to allow it to cool a bit. Because you don't want it to be too hot and too cold just right enough to dissolve the product okay so let's look at our powders sepi white is oil soluble and so i'm going to go over to dissolve my sepi white which i kind of already <laughs> mixed up okay so this is definitely sepi white powder so it's soluble in glycerin and this is my vegetable glycerin just regular pure glycerin that I'm going to be using to dissolve these. I will go ahead to double boil this just so it's properly dissolved. Nice cinnamide first. So taking my skin away. Right. And then our giga white powder. Giga white powder is soluble in water. So we're just gonna go ahead to dissolve that as well in water. And then our last powder today is the blueberry powder. I need to adjust that. Let's go up. This is our nice cinnamide. As you can see, it's properly dissolved, as clear as water. That is why niacinamide is used in a lot of face serums and all of that because it is crystal clear, it doesn't leave anything behind. This is our Giga Whites dissolved, you know, milky and all of that because I had to double boil them. I think I'll take this back just to make sure that it's dissolved properly. And this is our beer berry powder, as you can see, dissolves like water. My Sepi White has refused to dissolve. I think I'm going to actually start sidelining this powder entirely or except there's something i'm doing really long wrong i'm going to definitely look into my sepi white i do feel like i've added a lot of fluid so i'm just going to skip it move on to my formulation okay. my base cream now is going to be 42 percent um 32 percent so that's 63 grams so i'm going to go ahead to put um for six 63 grams sorry oh, yeah that's so 
The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add my polysorbate, which is three grams. Polysorbate, three grams. Let me add cinnamide. Remember, we're adding five grams of kojik. So, not hard. Sorry, seven point five grams, which is five percent. Can add seven point five. And then my beer berry. Keep going while it has been to sleep. So I'm just going to wake it up a little. I'm going to go ahead for my Abitin serum, which is 10%, which is 15 grams. So. I'm going to go ahead to put my glutathione of Prime, which is 5%. So I'm going to tar this. And 5% is 7.5 grams. 7.5. Go ahead to put a uh, beauty series. But I'm not going to be using beauty series oil because I'm trying to repair this skin. I'm going to be using this easy tone body oil. Um, it has light jojoba formula. Jojoba is very, very suitable for all skin types. So it's a safe bet. I'm going to be adding um, 2%, which is 3 grams. This is going to help to moisturize and glow the skin. And then I'm going to go ahead to add my AHA Mini, which is 4.5 grams. This is an alpha hydroxyl um, serum, so I definitely don't want to use too much. I'm going to go ahead to add 4.5 grams, sorry. And we have our rosy essential oil, which I'm going to be adding just one percent, which is 1.5 grams. I'm sure that's up too. Go ahead to add my propylene glycol, which is the last thing 
definitely want to add after you need to finish mixing your product this will help the product absorb into your skin really nicely so for my foundation my propylene glycol is going to be two percent which is usually the standard um usage of propylene glycol I'm really glad I skipped the what's it called sepi whites. I will not be working with that for now because I've done my research and I just seem to be finding it difficult to you know um, dissolve that powder. If you have successfully used sepi whites in your production and it's properly dissolved, please do share because I don't know it's not working for me. Go ahead to test the ph of this cream which simply just to be sure that it is suitable for the skin i'm going to be using very little water here this is how you test the ph of the product so i'm just going to be putting just really little there oh yeah and this cream already contains preservative the base cream contains preservative that is why i'm not adding much more preservative to it Want to be sure what our pH is. We take our pH meter here. The product, and this is regular water, it's 5.9 or thereabout. I'm counting, so this is definitely on the neutral scale. So I'm going to put it in the product to make sure that we don't have water. So I'm going to put it in the product and see the pH of the product. So I can already see that this product is on the um, alkaline scale, um, acidic scale, sorry, which is most times the, the case of products. However, I learned a very little trick, which is the baking soda trick. So for you to increase the pH of a product, um, you're going to add a little bit of baking soda, and then for you to reduce the pH of the product, we're going to add citric acid. So I'm just going to add a little bit of baking soda to this production. Because it's too acidic. So. I'm still getting used to using this pH. Meter, so this is on off. Apparently, it's reading things. Maybe it's reading the pH of air. I don't know. I'm just gonna put this in here. And let's see. So, as you can see, it has increased a little. I'm just gonna add some more and then see. can see it has changed the consistency of my product. So if you look closely, you would see that the pH meter in the um, water and the baking soda, you can see it's beginning to form bubbles and you can see the pH is really, really increasing. So that's what baking soda does to um, the pH of products, okay? It increases it because the product was just too acidic and I wanted it to be at least on the rate of 5. Now most times when you live for a period of time, it will drop, but right now I see the pH increasing quite a lot. So guys, I beat the products and this is what I'm getting now. I was scared because it was a bit fluffy, but then remembering that that's how baking soda is. This is the end result for this product. After adding the baking soda, it did give it, you know, a little bit of um, texture and 
yeah so this is how it is i'm going to test it once more just to be sure that we have a good ph here definitely don't want to be selling something that is too so as you can see let me bring it up closer this is 6.12 which is on the neutral scale and usually the skin's ph is usually five point um something five to five point five so this is on the neutral scale and i think this is going to be okay it will still drop i see that it's going to drop because it still has a little bit of water inside but yeah so this is the end product for this formulation i'm also going to make this formulation again i'm going to show you guys um the product without adding baking soda into it okay so i went ahead to you know mix an entire lotion again starting from scratch with the same amount of ingredients and everything and i like i said i'm going to do this without adding baking soda to the product and just seeing what the ph will be and what the consistency will be like without me having to add baking soda and all of that so i'm just using my hand mixer and you know mixing it the thing about hand mixer is sometimes it gives weight to a product so <clears throat> it allows air to come in and give weight to the product so i just use my hand mixer to mix the cream and as you can see it's the similar consistency as the one with the baking soda it's not as um light as the one with baking soda but it definitely has a thicker consistency as the one as baking soda so i'm going to go ahead to put my propylene glycol after mixing properly just to make sure that this product you know dissolves into the skin beautifully and moisturize this is a cream it is on the thick side because it has a lot of moisturizing properties so it's going to help you know with dry skin and as we repair the skin for the clients like i said so i'm just reducing the propylene glycol because it was a little bit over and there is no wastage over here and this ingredient sometimes affects the outcome of your product so you want to make sure that you're getting the exact measurements So this is our final result. Making creams is obviously an art and it's very exciting and all of that once you're able to understand the formulation process. So I'm just going to be putting this into my container.
so as you can see this gave me 150 grams of product and by the time I was done putting all of that in I got a total of 155 so that's why it's very important that you're using the same amount you know to make a hundred percent so you're getting your batch size correctly So as you can see, it has a very nice color and a very nice consistency. It's not going to pour out of this container. This is the perfect container. This is the finished product. That is why it's very important that you understand the formulation process so you can get the best out of your time and ingredients and, you know, not waste your ingredients. So thank you guys for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye!